ABC journalist Louise Milligan has agreed to pay federal Liberal MP Andrew Lamming $79,000 over a series of tweets. Dr Lamming alleged one of Ms Milligan's tweets defamed him by implying that he'd admitted taking an illegal photo of a woman's underwear. The federal court ruled in favour of Dr Lamming and heard the matter has been settled. Hello, I'm Janine Perrett. Sitting in for Paul Barry, welcome to Media Watch. The ABC last week paid the price for one journalist's injudicious tweets and learned the high cost of never having to say you're sorry. Only two months on from the Christian Porter defamation case, which cost the ABC $780,000, Louise Milligan was back in the news. But this time it wasn't for a story published by the ABC. Instead, Andrew Lemming was suing Milligan personally over comments on her social media. Or as the SMH reported... Over a series of four since-deleted tweets published on March 28 this year, including a tweet suggesting he had admitted to an offence under the criminal code, i.e. taking a photo of a woman's underwear under her skirt. There is one aspect of this case which has caused considerable consternation outside and inside the ABC. While the national broadcaster did not publish the tweets and was not sued by Dr Lamming, it will cover Milligan's costs, citing particular and exceptional circumstances. Prompting many, like Andrew Bolt, for example, to ask the obvious question. But what exceptional circumstances? What circumstance would require taxpayers to pay for legal costs that Milligan incurred all by herself in her own free time? In the absence of any further explanation from the ABC, Bob got Andrew Lamming himself onto the show. If Louise Milligan had apologised right off the bat, like other people did with, that you contacted, would the ABC now be on the hook for $79,000 plus legal costs? I can probably answer that question, Andrew, by talking about a very gracious and immediate apology from, of all people, Senator Sarah Hanson-Young from the Australian Greens, who, uh, when confronted uh, with a similar commentary that she made a month after the incident, apologised very graciously and put it online and solved the problems. You'll note Lamming didn't actually answer yes. So we don't really know if this costly saga could have been avoided if Milligan had simply apologised, as requested, in his lawyer's letter in early May. But certainly that's what Hanson Young and some other big names did after police found Lamming had no case to answer on the upskirting charge. They included journalist Erin Hinch, Labor Senator Murray Watt and News Corp journalist Eliza Barr. On legal advice, Milligan deleted the offending tweets and tweeted a lengthy note correcting the record and noting that the woman was actually wearing shorts at the time. She also encouraged her 100,000 followers to read an ABC story about Lamming being cleared of upskirting by the police. But sorry seemed to be the hardest word. Without that, it wasn't enough. Ten days later, Lamming commenced legal proceedings against Milligan personally, which ended in last week's costly settlement for the broadcaster which is galling for all us taxpayers and for ABC journalists who've been told to live with tighter budgets. As Communications Minister Paul Fletcher stated... Now the ABC has been exposed to a financial penalty on a scale that could have, for instance, funded the annual salary of an additional regional journalist. The ABC says Milligan's tweets were published in good faith, which contained an honest error that has been widely reported by numerous other journalists and politicians. It's probably no coincidence then that two days before the Milligan settlement was announced, ABC Managing Director David Anderson sent an updated social media policy to staff, including this clear warning. What is separately created and posted on personal social media accounts is editorially and legally the responsibility of the owner of the accounts. So if that's the case now, was it not the case before? We asked the ABC to explain exactly what were the exceptional circumstances in this case and got this reply. Given the nature of those circumstances, it would not be appropriate to make any further comment on this, except to say that the matter was not assessed in isolation. The circumstances required consideration of many factors, including complex legal issues. One of those complex issues was the far bigger defamation battle involving the former Attorney General Christian Porter. That case was unfolding at the very same time and involved the same tough lawyers, Rebecca Giles and Sue Crisanthu, who represented both Porter and Lamming. Hopefully we get some real answers about what took place when ABC boss David Anderson fronts Senate estimates in October. 
As for Milligan, the multi-award winning Four Corners reporter, to many she is the crusading journalist who will never back down, much less say sorry. To critics, she's a journalist turned crusader, a law unto herself despite the repercussions. At the very least, I suggest she tones down the tweets which are not helping her cause, no matter how worthy she thinks it might be. And now to that perennial political pest, Clive Palmer, who's been making news with his latest political stunt. First it was WA's hard border, now it's our vaccine rollout that Clive Palmer has his sights on. The Queensland billionaire threatening to sue, claiming the jabs are ineffective. Yep, Clive was terrorising the West last week, spreading misinformation about the COVID vaccine and telling Perth 6PR... It's not for me to prove anything, it's for the pharmaceutical companies to prove that their uh, vaccines are safe and they're effective. Why they give him a platform for this dangerous drivel is beyond me. Yet Palmer was coy on one prickly subject. Have you been vaccinated? Yeah. Well, I, I won't say what my position is, right? Because it's, you know, everyone's medical record should be kept, kept as a private thing and it shouldn't be an issue for public debate. No, it shouldn't be an issue for public debate, Clive, but don't let that stop you. And it's not just Nine Own Radio that was giving Palmer oxygen last week. Over the past two weeks, as the Delta variant ripped through the nation, so did Palmer, taking out no less than seven front-page ads in the Nine Metro newspapers like this. Lockdowns affect mental health. Lockdowns destroy jobs. Lockdowns break up marriages. We, we can, can never, never trust, trust the, the Liberal or Labor, Labor parties again. again. OK, but surely these ads are a little at odds with Nine Newspapers' COVID editorials, which promote the benefits of staying at home and criticising the anti-lockdown brigade. They have even used their own editorial pages to slam Palmer's anti-vaccine campaigns in the past. Palmer slammed over disgraceful vaccine mail-out. And Nine isn't the only one happy to pocket Palmer's dough while at the same time rallying for stay-at-home orders and vaccinations. Last week, News Corp and The West Australian were also awash with Clive's yellow screamers, prompting a rebellion from readers and a stern joint letter from five federal MPs who wrote to Nine and News Corp asking them to live up to their civic duties as a national publisher and stop running Palmer's ads. So will Nine stop publishing them, as one report claimed last week? No, it will not. Nine told Media Watch it has rejected Palmer's anti-vaccine ads, but it will not reject Palmer's anti-lockdown ads. They told us... Individuals in a free society have the right to purchase clearly labelled political advertising which questions lockdowns as a policy response. As a media organisation, we do not believe in censoring ads that do not contravene the health advice or a targi guidance on vaccines. So what about News Corp? Like Nine, they say they don't have plans to stop Palmer's anti-lockdown ads either. Good to hear they've all drawn a line somewhere. Morality tests on advertisers are a slippery slope, but misinformation in a health crisis is a whole other thing. And let's face it, media companies have to grab the bucks anywhere they can these days. Clive Palmer, Harvey Norman, can't afford to be choosy. And now to that other great challenge threatening the world. Record wildfires in southern Europe. Flames tearing through the US and Canada, plus our own fires and our droughts and those rain bombs. A UN scientific report eight years in the making says planet Earth is getting hotter faster than we thought. The latest IPCC report on the state of the world's climate was released last week, helpfully reminding us all that the pandemic is not the only crisis facing humanity. And helping to sum up the findings, the world's leading scientists gave the media a simple tagline which they duly repeated. Code red for humanity. The UN sounds a dire warning about global warming. Code red for humanity. The bombshell new report. The landmark UN report that said it's code red for humanity. Hugh, this report is being called a, quote, code red for humanity. And while we've often been critical of the Australian over its climate change coverage, it was raising the alarm as well with this front page warning. Clock ticking on climate. IPCC. Unequivocal evidence. Humans warming planet. Adelaide's Advertiser and Brisbane's Courier Mail also ran the UN's dire warning on its front pages. And on Sky News, where I've worked, well, that entirely depends on what time you tune in. 
during the day. The United Nations report has found that climate change is unequivocally being driven by human activity and it is fueling the extreme weather that we're seeing. Or after dark. They so hate that term. I'll tell you what we won't do. We won't damage industry, we won't damage jobs, we won't damage the economy and you can scream from the back bench as much as you like. It's not going to happen here. So just who did the ABC's flagship program Q&A have on to respond to the IPCC's landmark eight-year report? Well, not an actual climate scientist for a start. Instead, it opened with Nationals backbencher and coal campaigner Matt Canavan, who called the whole report a beta. It's, I think, a great shame. It's very sad that the IPCC, who once did very, very good work, uh, and I do agree with their overall findings on climate change, but now it is, it has descended into something that's much more like, uh, like spin uh, than well, science. Probably, we, we saw that over the past scare week. People, though, when they... It probably does scare people, some of these projections would, and thoughts. I mean, why would, why would a scientist want to change people's vote? I mean, uh, this, this is, the, the, you saw the spin over the past week as they drip fed the, the fear porn about this rather than just release the science. Fear porn? Really? No wonder the viewers were even more fired up than usual including former PM Malcolm Turnbull. Apparently, not one climate scientist could be found to go on the show, so Canavan's nonsense goes unrebutted by anyone with real expertise in the science. Shameful. Also putting in the boot was the ABC's former news director, Max Utrich, who called it a serious error by Q&A and added... With the public desperate for rational, credible debate info, the program should not pander to fringe lunacy. Any counterpose excuse doesn't pass intellectual muster. Now, Canavan is an elected politician and entitled to his view, but on this issue, in this week, you think they could do better than a backbencher who sends out tweets like these in winter. Climate change. And this one today on the fall of Kabul. Does anyone know whether the Taliban will sign up to net zero? Offensive is an understatement. And finally, it's time for some exciting news for everyone stuck at home from the gang at Studio 10. Yeah. Big day here, launch of Paramount Plus. Same Everyone's much. very excited. Hooray, another streaming service. And the excitement lasted all week long. iCarly is back with a bang on Paramount Plus. Australia's latest streaming giant Paramount Plus is the new home of all things football. Head to paramountplus.com.au for more information. So good. So good. So good. And they weren't just pumped up in the morning. Ten's top news anchors were also celebrating. The new streaming giant Paramount Plus lands down under. Now there's a new service pushing its way into a crowded marketplace with Paramount Plus offering homegrown content. One of Hollywood's most incredible movie libraries will be accessible to Australians from tonight. But wait, there's more. There was a full wrap on TEN's primetime current affairs hour. Another platform is set to enter the Aussie streaming arena and this one is as big as it gets. Paramount Plus is the brand new giant hitting our streaming sphere. So just why was TEN so taken by Paramount Plus? Well, no prizes for guessing, but we'll let Lisa Wilkinson explain. <laughs> and of course we are also part of the Viacom CBS family here at TEN. Yes, TEN was just keeping it in the family. Paramount Plus is owned by Viacom CBS which also owns 10. At least Lisa revealed that because some of the other 10 promoters didn't bother. And even rivals at Nine were happy to give it a plug too. Paramount Pictures, the studio behind them, is launching their brand new streaming service in Australia today. It's fresh content. It's owned by Viacom CBS. So they have Paramount Pictures, Showtime, Nickelodeon, and they also own Channel 10. Or maybe not quite so happily as Carl Stefanovic pointed out. Hang on a second there. Yeah. Here. We're devoting an awful lot of primetime breakfast television yes. to promoting a company, a streaming service that we don't even own. Isn't Have this you got great? rocks in your head this morning? <laughs> yes, Carl would much rather plug Nine's own streaming service as the network has done repeatedly since launching it in 2015. The good news is the whole season is dropping on Stan today, so there's plenty to binge over the weekend. Huge Excellent. flex by Stan to get that show. Huge mm. flex. Network cross-promotion is alive and well. Where's ours? And that's all from us tonight. There's more on our website, including statements from the ABC and Nine. And don't forget Media Bytes every Thursday on your favourite social media platform. But for now, until next week, goodbye.